and Mr. Go, and he'd just like to ask you one or two questions, if that's okay. Yeah. Go ahead. I've just been I've just been told by your principal that, um, uh, as well as Mr. Highway being a superb teacher, one of the things is that the uh, students are invited to come up in front of the class and to to teach as well. And I just saw a bit of that, and I've just heard a bit of that. So I suspect that many of you are probably going to become teachers in due course. <laughs> I just wanted to ask a few questions, because I know that um, many of you will have come from different primary schools, and you were in year eight, is that yeah, right? Yeah. So you've been here for two years now. Um, I just wanted to get your impressions, because I've been walking around, it's a fantastic school, um, and everything I've seen so far is really impressive. But are there things that I might not notice that are good about this school that you can tell me? <laughs> 60 nil. I'm is that right? When is the final, by the way? Can anyone tell me when the final is? We don't it's know. Yet. Don't, know. Don't, know. don't know. Um well the teachers are always so helpful. Whenever you're stuck with something, it's not just like, oh just move on. It doesn't really matter. They will stop and help you. They only try and work out why it is there's an obstacle or something. Yeah. That you've got. Okay. And how many of you like science? <laughs> and that's obviously because of Mr. Hyde. Yes. Now, I'm 43 now. I've never been able to make pastry in my life. So, what's the secret? Get a nice thick dough. A nice thick dough. Oh. What did you do today? What methods did you use, Tyler? Kneading and rolling. Egging and rolling. Kneading. Roll the rubbing in methods. Yeah. And that mix there, is that the... Okay, and that's basil you chopped yourself. And where do you get the ingredients from? She, she gets it all. And where, where do you get it from, Miss, from Sainsbury's? No, we do, we do have um, Asda deliveries. Sometimes okay. Exactly where they're coming from. You set the high standards, you set the benchmark, you let them know they can do it and they can tr do it. Like Duncan there has done fantastic this year, absolutely brilliant. He's moved, you know, a bit. And he's pushing again to try and get in there by the end of the year and he should do that. He's also probably going to do statistics and get a grade there. An absolutely fantastic student, really come on leaps and bounds. Are you in year 10 or 11 then? Great. So I think our, our okay. students know that if they work hard, they'll get good grades yes. and we'll push them the whole way. And it doesn't matter where they come, where they start off, we will try and reach the benchmark yes. because I maintain every student should be getting C's or above. Yes, absolutely. Um, even going back to Passmore's, we had the very bottom set in Passmore's, which was set seven, and we got C's out of set seven in the first year, just with that time every and dedication. Season. We got um, a majority of them true on, on C grades and above. We were so. talking about the, the fact that kids will be coming after school into the early evening yep. to, to study the maths. It's become such a focus for the yep. school. They come in on Saturdays. They've been asking me for next week. I said, no, I want a week off. I'm going to go. <laughs> Have attitudes changed over time towards crime? I mean, did they treat criminals very differently 100 or 150 years ago? Can I ask you? Oh, well, yeah, they did, they did treat criminals differently like 100 years ago until now. Uh, what was different then? Well, they didn't have any like, ev like evidence to like catch any criminals, so there could be someone dead on the floor. They couldn't know who killed him, but because, now, they, yeah. And but now they could find out who killed the person on the floor. Yeah. How many of you want to keep taking history on beyond this year? How many of you would like to take it on oh, for as long as the time you're at school? Yeah. Um, and why? If your mum or dad said, "Why do you like history?" What would you say? Anything else? Fun. Fun. Interesting. Learn new things. Learn new things. Helps you make, um, uh, I was going to say, you were just taking a piece of evidence from the past, making an argument. It's the sort of thing that employers will look for. When you go on to college or go for a job, one of the things about history is that you will have used facts, turned them into an argument and said, things used to be this way, but now this way because of this. <laughs> and I know from my own job that if you can make an argument, then you can convince people, and that's what employers are looking for. Um, they took the photos uh -huh. and then worked on the photos. Yes, and there's proof of Yeah. Oh, great. So everyone here is doing GCSE? All of them, yes. Here. Yeah. 
and they're working on natural form forms. Uh -huh. So this is how they started. They worked yes. on insect images, uh -huh. natural forms, and then from that, they took yes. photographs mm -hmm. and then produced their final painting. And we're just finishing off. Okay. And you're studying sculpture as well? Uh, do you have a favourite artist? Is there one particular artist that you think? Um, I really like Barb Hetworth. Uh -huh. Like designs and stuff, just so out. There. Yes. And uh, do you think you'll take art on beyond GCSE? Yeah, um, I really want to be an artist. Oh, wonderful. Um, um, when we arrived, we drove past, and I thought it was such a, an outstanding, beautiful building. And the thing I took from that is that um, the people who had put money into this building had confidence in you that they thought that you deserved to have um, an outstanding school because you were um, an amazing group of young people. And I've had the opportunity now to visit a number of classes. And what struck me is that everyone's well behaved. Everyone is working hard. Uh, everyone I've talked to seems to be enjoying their lessons. The teachers are great. They're young. They're well motivated. Um, they <coughs> really enjoy spending time with you. Um, and it seems as though everyone is doing well, um, and that people who perhaps were a little less confident when they arrived at the school are discovering that they can do far more than they ever imagined. And that's uh, sir, what um, was your take on the plans linking the school with the community, um, also with the people <coughs> uh, coming through the gateway? Well, the great thing about the school, as we were just saying, is that it's really helped people in the community um, realise that um, uh, people here can achieve so much more than maybe people used to think five or ten years ago. Um, and I think if the school here has a primary school alongside it, that means that the process of helping people to be a bit more ambitious can start even earlier. Because I know that um, some of the primary schools locally haven't had head teachers for a wee while. What I think we need is to have a, a primary school alongside this school so that everyone can see that um, right from the moment that people arrive at the age of four at reception, that they can begin to do amazing things. <laughs> discussions about Barbara Hepworth, discussions about forensic science. Mm. You must be impressed with what you've seen today. I mean, hugely impressed. I mean, it's just been amazing to see young people from a wide variety of backgrounds just so enthusiastic about coming to school. Um, the one thing that came through in every lesson is that the, uh, the children and young people just love being here. Now, that's a reflection of the fact that you've got a great school, which is well-led, well-supported, um, and has teachers who just enjoy being with young people and are ambitious to make sure they can be the best they possibly can be. If you go around far, you go from Chafford 100, most improved school in United Kingdom, Ormston's an academy, academy here, other schools' as aspirations. Why do you think Thurrock has embraced this academy culture? Well, I think there's something about um, people in Thurrock, and in particular young people in Thurrock, that struck me today. And that is that they're ambitious, they're energetic, they want to achieve so much more. This is our bell. Yes. Ah, well, I, and in a, in a way, in a way, in a way, there are a few. I'm showing my age now because it's the, this is an 80s number. But there are a few more aspirational songs than this. And I suppose the fact that we are listening to Gold while we're doing this interview sort of um, underlines it. And I think that um, in the past, there's always been a tendency for some parts of the country to be written off. And I suspect that um, in the past people will have said, you know, areas like Tharrick and so on, well, we know people are going to leave school at 16 and there are going to be certain jobs that people were doing, basically the same jobs that their mums and dads and uh, uh, granddads and uh, 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 grandmas did. But now, those jobs are no longer there. And we're having to think again about education. And one of the striking things here is that you can see that young people are embracing the future because they've got the, the energy and the ambition and the drive. Um, and I think one of the things about Thurrock is that its biggest asset um, is its young people. <laughs>